What happened to Circuit City? Once a shining star in the world of electronics retail, Circuit City rose to the top as one of the largest retailers in the United States. It was a household name and the go-to destination for all the tech needs of people. Circuit City came a long way from its humble beginnings as a TV store to conquering the world of consumer electronics. So, how did a company so big, a giant, fall from grace and ultimately declare bankruptcy? Stick till the end because in this video we will uncover the story of Circuit City and what led to its demise. The growth of Circuit City is a perfect example of how great things can happen from small beginnings. In 1949, Samuel Wurzel was on a vacation in Richmond, Virginia. He was having a haircut when the barber told him about the first television station in the South that opened almost a year ago. Wurzel thought that this entertainment device could be a great opportunity for him. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, so Wurzel took his shot. The next thing you know, he packed his bags and moved from New York to Virginia with his family to open a store called Ward's. He was using the front half of a tire store on Broad Street to sell televisions. Wurzel used some genius techniques to make a name for his brand in the beginning. While all the big department stores were trying to reach the top spot in the TV market, Wurzel had a different strategy. Instead of trying to compete with big department stores, he focused on lower income consumers by offering flexible installment payment plans. But that's not all. He had a secret weapon, free in-home demonstrations. Let me tell you exactly how it worked. Award salesmen would drop off the brand new TV at your house for the night, completely free of charge, and offer to pick it up the next day. So, pretty much like a test drive. And the results were amazing. Once a TV was in a family's home, it almost never came out because they bought it. This kind of innovative thinking helped Wards become a household name. Wetzel's prediction turned out to be correct. The number of households that had televisions in their houses grew from 1 million to 20 million in just four years. Wards also began to sell appliances like washing machines, refrigerators, and electric stoves, and they were always one of the first ones to sell new technology. One Ward store grew into four, and then in 1974, Wards took a bold move and closed two of their original stores. No, it was not because they were facing losses or anything. They did it for the funds to open a massive 40,000 square foot electronic superstore and named it Ward's Loading Dock. This superstore became famous because of a wide range of products and low prices, but Ward's didn't stop there. By the 1980s, Ward's had opened more superstores and started calling them Circuit City. These Circuit City stores got so famous that the company decided to change its name from Ward's to Circuit City. In 1986, Samuel Wurzel stepped down as CEO, passing the torch to Rick Sharp. Under Sharp's leadership, Circuit City reached a new height. During his tenure, sales skyrocketed from $1 billion to an impressive $12.6 billion. Earnings grew from $22 million to a staggering $327 million, and the number of stores ballooned from 69 to an incredible 616. In 1995, Circuit City entered the prestigious Fortune 500 list at number 280, and by 2003, they had climbed all the way to 151. There is no doubt that the company accomplished great things, but as they say, good things don't last forever. The Fall Analysts suggest that there were two projects and many wrong decisions that eventually led to the demise of Circuit City. Number 1. CarMax In an effort to diversify its business, Circuit City ventured into the used car space and launched CarMax. Unlike traditional used car dealerships, CarMax revolutionized the buying experience by eliminating salespeople and offering fixed prices. Customers could browse the selection at their own pace without the pressure of any salesperson. The concept was a hit, and it resonated so well with customers that CarMax even went public with an IPO. You might be thinking that if the project was hit, why did I say that it had a bad impact on the company? There are two reasons. The first is, Circuit City lost focus on the company's core business, which gave the competitors a chance to surpass it, and Circuit City lost its position as the number one electronics retailer. The other reason is, when Circuit City spun off CarMax, a lot of talented management also went with it. Number 2. DivX After losing its position as the number one electronics retailer, Circuit City had to do something to take back its position. So they tried to make a comeback in the market with a new technology called DivX. So far, Circuit City had been very lucky with new technologies, but not this time. The idea was that customers could purchase a DivX disc and special DivX disc players and then watch it as many times as they wished within 24 hours. Imagine watching a movie again and again, not because you love it, but because of the pressure of your DivX expiring. 
Circuit City wanted it to be more convenient than renting tapes from video stores, and it was because you did not have to return a DivX, but nobody chose DivX over DVDs, which were also available in the market. Things got worse when Sony and Warner Brothers announced that they would not make their movies available on DivX. Circuit City abandoned the idea within a year, and this project made them a loss of a whopping $233 million. Number 3. Store Restructuring Alan McCullough became the president and CEO of Circuit City in 2000, and he did not take much time to announce his plan for new real estate investments. It might not have proved to be a good decision if they did it properly. You see, Circuit City's rival Best Buy always tried to set up their store at the best locations. On the other hand, Circuit City secured only the inferior locations, believing that the customers would come to them. But why would they when they are getting what they need at locations that are easily accessible to them? Best Buy obtained the better real estate than Circuit City through strategic and clever lease negotiations, which always gave it the upper hand. And guess what Circuit City did to cut the cost of moving appliances from one store to the other? Simple. They stopped selling them, despite the fact that they were between 10% and 15% of the company's total sales. Number 4. Best Buy You might have already figured that Circuit City was not very good at handling the competition. Alan Wurzel was on Circuit City's board of directors until 2001. He stated that they never considered Best Buy as a threat. They thought they were the smartest, but the real trouble begins when you think you know the answers. By the year 2003, Best Buy's market capitalization was 10 times greater than Circuit City's. Not only that, but it was also better than Circuit City in terms of overall sales, profit per store, and U.S. market share. Number 5. The Firing of 3,900 Employees In 2003, Circuit City finally decided to start paying the employees on an hourly basis like Best Buy instead of paying commission. However, the company chose the worst possible way to execute that. In a single day, Circuit City fired 3,900 highest paid salespeople. It sounds stupid because the company fired the people who were the best at their jobs just because they were earning more. This decision crushed employee morale and productivity. Everyone must have been thinking that they will get fired if they earned more. And this is not all of it. Over the next five years, there were hundreds of smaller decisions that added up to cause huge destruction. Circuit City's situation worsened every year and then finally in November of 2008, the company filed for bankruptcy. Circuit City owed $115.9 million to Samsung, $118.8 million to HP, and $60 million to Sony, but it had no money to pay back its 100,000 creditors. So what happened to Circuit City after bankruptcy? Well, you'll be surprised to know that the company made a comeback in 2018 as an online retailer. It is alive, but the brand is nothing compared to how big it was two decades ago. New owner Ronnie Schmoll plans to revive the reputation of the brand, but how things will unfold is yet to be seen. Do you think that Circuit City will be able to rise from the ashes and once again become the giant it once was? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss amazing videos like this from us.